Welcome back to Development Division. This is Chris, and today I'll be converting my uh, drum brake setup in the rear to disc brakes. For the removal and install, you will need a 10, 12, 14, 17, and 21 deep hex socket and combo wrenches, Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, a hammer, and a ratchet or an impact driver. For this swap, you will need EX or SI rear knuckles, a pair of brake lines, e-brake lines and bracket, the calipers and the caliper mounting brackets, and ABS lines. You want to mark this alignment bolt with a paint marker or a sharpie, uh, so when you reinstall everything with your new knuckle, uh, everything will still be uh, somewhat aligned. Now, the swap is pretty simple. You just undo the three control arm bolts that hold the knuckle on. First one is a 17 millimeter, the two on the bottom are 17 millimeter actually, and the one on the top is a 14 millimeter. While you're doing this modification, it's a good time to look at your control arms in the rear, kind of check out the suspension. Uh, my upper control arm in the rear is pretty shot, so I'll be replacing that in a, com in a coming video. Once you have those bolts loosened, you can go ahead and remove the ABS speed sensor. You can reuse the one for your drum brakes, or you can just replace them. A 10 millimeter bolt will take this sensor out. Next, you want to disconnect the brake line. You can do this with a 10 millimeter line wrench. I really, really recommend a line wrench for this. Do not go in there with your open-ended wrench and go after this, because you will round your brake line nut and you're gonna have a bad time. Do yourself a favor, pay yourself forward, get yourself some brake line hoses and uh, you'll never have this problem again and you will never have that problem so get the right tool for the job and it will be a good time also have a water bottle or some sort of container ready when you disconnect the line because brake fluid will start to come out and brake fluid is very corrosive so it'll eat up your paint it'll eat up anything in its way it'll even eat your cheeseburger so take your precautions Now that the brake lines and everything is disconnected, I can go ahead and rip out this knuckle. It's going to take some persuasion with Mjolnir over there. After a while and a little bit of playing, you can get this knuckle out, believe it or not. The emergency cable is routed under the body of the Civic until where it meets the uh, center console of the car. To remove the bracket securing it to the frame, it's a 12 millimeter socket. Get those out. I think there's three or four on each side leading up to this little heat shield. So this heat shield is actually pretty easy to remove. It's four 10 millimeter bolts and the metal's very malleable so you can just bend it out of the way uh, to get it around the exhaust and then when you put it in you can just bend it back. So I did not record the part where you remove the cables from the inside of the center console, but it's actually pretty easy. I pulled up a video for you right now. You, there are two Phillips head screws that are in your center console. You want to remove those. And then in the foot wells on the passenger and driver side, there are going to be two trim clips, one on each side. Pop those out with a flathead screwdriver. You just need to slide it back just a little bit and you can access your cables. Getting in the new knuckle uh, is going to take some persuasion. Uh, I have Mjolnir and I'm just going to tap it in here. I'm not really worried about the hammer hitting the rotor at all. I'm not going to be reusing this rotor. Um, and it, it might be loosening up some rust because this is a pretty crusty looking rotor and knuckle I have here. I'm placing in the bolts, the alignment bolt on the bottom. I made some marks before I took it out. And now we can reap those benefits of taking that extra precaution and set the alignment just exactly how it was. Now this may not be necessarily true because the, you know, the bushings might have a different wear on them and all these different variables just because it's not a knuckle that was on the car originally. So the alignment won't be 100% accurate, but I'll be doing an alignment later when I do the upper control arms in the rear. So it'll be fine for now. This eyeball uh, will be okay.
Now, to secure said bolt, you want to hold the alignment nut in place with a 21 millimeter open-ended wrench and then drive it home with a 17 millimeter socket. On the top, you want to secure that. Removing old rotors from cars like this are kind of terrible sometimes. They have these Phillips head screws that secure the disc to the knuckle. This is done in assembly, and if you've never done your brakes, a power screwdriver like that, an impact screwdriver, and you'll be good to go. I'm going to remove the caliper bracket here. Today's tool tip comes to you with two open and closed ended combination wrenches. To increase the torque, what you can do is hook a closed end with an open end in a fashion where it makes a bar, a longer bar. You just add them together and that sometimes can multiply your torque. Another tool I'm very fond of is this electronic ratchet. It really speeds things up. Those things are a little bit OP, but uh, they work really, really awesome. Shout out to Joe. He's been graciously letting me use his tools since the move, and uh, without him, none of these mods would be happening. Now, getting off an old rotor can be a pain. Usually, you want to smack around either the lip of the rotor or smack on the face of it. However, this is not working for me, and it might not be working for you, so they conveniently place a screw hole inside of the rotors, so look for this special hole and find a screw that fits. I was able to find a 10 millimeter head bolt from the assembly that we just took apart. So the screw will screw into the rotor itself, and as you screw it, the length of the bolt will travel in through the rotor and it'll touch the hub. And once you start tightening it, it's gonna start pushing the rotor apart from the hub. That tends to work out uh, 99% of the time, so good luck with that. Next, you can see me installing some new power stop brakes. I'm, I'm installing the brake rotor now. I'm replacing these screws. I just tie in these until they're snug. The hub sandwiches the brake rotor with the wheel, so uh, I won't be worried about the disc being floppy or anything like that. Um, you can get some new uh, Phillips head screws, which I recommend you replace them. You can get those from online. It's probably the cheapest just to get them on eBay. Um, I got a set of like eight of these from Honda, genuine screws and all that. We are going to be using medium strength thread locker for most of these bolts going into this rear knuckle. You want to use this in high vibration areas and where the brakes and the wheel hub is, that's vibration central. That's the downtown market right there stuff goes down. Now it's my first time working on brakes with this type of design. I never used the brakes like this. I've always seen systems with the disc brake and the drum brake still inside being an emergency brake. Like the Jeep is set up like that but this one is, is a little bit strange. It also has one of those calipers that screws in instead of just presses in. So that was kind of interesting to deal with as well. I like to put a little bit of grease on the hardware that the brake pads slide on. Usually these sliders go on the caliper brackets themselves. I like to put a little bit of grease between them, just a thin film will do you just right. I spread a little bit of grease on the backside of the pads as well, and I seem to feel like this helps with a little bit of the dampening in the squeaking and noisy brakes. I haven't had any problems with noisy brakes in the past ever since I started doing this, so Maybe that's a coincidence, or maybe it's just skill.
So I will be installing these stainless steel brake lines to the Civic as well. This will increase the brake feel and uh, you're, you're pretty much just taking all the flexibility from your hoses away, uh, the expanding ability that is. Rubber will expand under pressure. The stainless steel braiding on the outside protects the brake lines from doing that now. So the brake pedal will feel more responsive and it will feel a little bit more stiff, which I think I like. Kind of bringing in a new modern feel for brakes uh, on the Civic today. The original lines had over 150,000 miles on them, so I feel like it was a good time to upgrade them anyways. Now installing the e-brake cable onto the disc, the disc brake assembly there is a little bit tricky. I recommend looking up a picture of one or taking a picture of how it hooks up before you take it off of donor car uh, because it kind of stumped me for like, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, but 20 to 30 minutes I was just standing there like a doofus not knowing how to hook this thing up. Uh, I just had to flip it the correct way and it needs to route under the knuckle. After the e-brake cable is secured, we're going to move on and just go ahead and tidy up this side. Run the lines, mount the lines up to the brackets. Uh, the brake line or the hydraulic line has uh, one bracket that's similar to the OEM and it just goes right up along the wheel well there. And then the other bracket ties it into your, the coilover. Oh. And another bracket will tie it into the knuckle and it will hold it uh, from moving around too much. Same with the e-brake cable. The e-brake cable is going to have the same exact routing as it did before. So just line up the brackets with the holes and you'll be good to go. Let's finish this side off by tightening the hard line to the new stainless steel line that we have and securing the bracket that holds it in place as well. So overall, I rate this 2 out of 5 wrenches as far as mods go. Uh, these are pretty easy swaps, uh, it's just part for part, you just take out the old parts, put in the new parts, uh, it's chill, everything fits like it should because these are OEM parts. It's not so difficult because, uh, like I said, you're just going to be taking off parts and replacing them right there and there. Uh, but there is a little bit of difficulty and a little bit of messiness when it comes to brake fluid and setting up the lines and It's a little bit tedious getting into your interior taking that apart to get to the e-brake cables uh, but if you have uh, But if you have access to a junkyard that has some EX civics or SI civics in it uh, I would recommend making this upgrade if you still have the drum brakes of course you want to bleed your brakes anytime you open up the system so I took a ton of time sucking out a ton of air from these systems uh, but eventually it came out all good and the brakes feel great. It's the next morning and I think I'm dreaming because my drum brakes are gone and they've replaced with disc brakes. I have modern braking on my car finally. It's crazy that this car was released in 2009 but it's an economy general consumer car so what can I say. Another thing I needed to wrap up was to replace the front rubber lines for the brakes with stainless steel in the front. Uh, the front and back match their same brand, everything like that. And all the products used in today's video will be linked to in the description box below. So if you want to do this upgrade, if you're looking for these brake lines, you're looking for these parts, I'll have the part numbers down there and everything you need to be able to find those as well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, learned something today. Uh, I'm glad I can finally stop, and I'll see you guys in the next video.